So number one, God is a political being fully concerned with the public good of not just humans, but the cosmos. This is obvious for those who are familiar with the scriptures. God comes to reveal himself to humans in the Old Testament as a personal religio-political reality. So he cares about you personally. He's come to organize around we relate to him religion and then also a political reality. In the Exodus, though we learn much about God before the Exodus, it is in this story that God introduces God's self to the world and to his people, Exodus 1 through 12. God told Pharaoh that he did all that he did to show you my power and to make my name resound through all the earth, Exodus 9, 16. The I am that showed up to Moses in the burning bush is the one holding a political office of king confronting the religious and the political powers in the Egyptian empire and is deeply enmeshed in the work of liberating his people from slavery and sin. How did he do this? Just looking at the final plague of Exodus 12, the destroyer ended up killing the firstborn children of Egypt and Goshen. In this, we see God offering social liberation leaving Goshen for the promised land, spiritual liberation, forgiveness of sin through the blood of the lamb, and political liberation, disgracing the gods of Egypt, shaming Pharaoh, establishing new theopolitical liturgies like the Passover meal. God reveals God's self as a political being that is offering a gospel of socio-spiritual salvation. Just keep in mind as my argument builds that God never in the whole of scripture, this is an argument from silence, says, I am a political king, but you are not a political people. In fact, it's completely the opposite, spanning the old to the new Testament. So that's number one. Number two, all humans are political beings. We are political beings in three ways. You are political by virtue of one being made in the image of a political God. Here in the West, we've been drowning in the Descartes notion that I think, therefore I am, as if we can self-actualize and self-determine our meaning and our purpose. It's very Western. It's very American. It's very individualistic. So if I don't think or want my faith to be political, and if I don't want to be a political follower of Jesus or a political being to begin with, we say, I think I am not political, therefore I'm not political. But this is wrong. A Christian rendering of Descartes' philosophical assumption is God spoke, God created, therefore I am. You are inherently political. Two, humans are political by virtue of doing the things God has put into the human heart, the desire to see the world flourish. We have been made in the image of a political God to reflect God's politics as we engage in the work of promoting human flourishing. Why can't we help building political systems as humans? We organize out of our design to see humanity succeed, grow, and find the love of God. Often we fail, and we have failed miserably. But you, nonetheless, are put here to take part in these political systems. And we can't help but do it. Three, you are political by virtue of your connectivity to everything around you. To improve again on Descartes, God spoke, God created, therefore, we are. Humans cannot disassociate themselves from the ground, the waves, the dirt, the chair, the apartment, the sky, this basement, the animals, the streets, the rain, our fellow humans, or the systems that we have created. You cannot emancipate yourself from politics any more than you can emancipate yourself 
from God or from your biological family. To say you are not a political being is to act like a floating spirit, a Gnostic soul hovering above the ground. God has made you involved in everything that surrounds you. If politics is the public good, then you can't emancipate yourself from the public good. And even if you try, you are going to end up creating smaller political systems in isolation from whatever you're trying to run from. <laughs>